So one of the things that I've been really trying to figure out in my swing is how to control the club face, particularly on the downswing. I usually am looking pretty good on the backswing and then something magical happens where I just get too open and it causes all these downstream effects as I get closer to the ball. So Ed has a bunch of different ideas for us to talk about today and talk about how to actually control the club face with some different motions. And we saw another video we really liked online. We'll talk about that a little bit later to kind of have some more things to think about. We've talked about many times here for the last couple of years, you and I together. I mean, learning to swing correctly is about controlling club path and club face mm -hmm. and attack angle. Um, and learning to set up correctly. And um, so learning how to control this club face on the way down is huge. Yeah. And from my perspective, especially with better players, when you start to see guys that have handicap indexes uh, 12 or less, mm -hmm. <clears throat> their paths are actually pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> they may be making a slight error, yeah. They may be slightly to the left or slightly to the right, but they almost do it the same way every time. Sure. Yep. And so, but what they're not consistent on is the club face. And you might wonder why that would be the case, but, it, but, but that's actually a common sense answer too. Are the clubs the same length? No. No, they're not. <laughs> Unless and, you're Bryson, I guess. Yes. Yeah, and not in all of his, though. Yeah, yeah. His driver is longer. <laughs> that's true. That's yep. true. And his putter's shorter, mm -hmm. I think. I, I, I don't know the length of his putter. <laughs> it might not be. And, um, but because we do have different lengths, then it does tend to vary our club face control between clubs as well. Yep. And so our path might stay pretty consistent, but you know we have more of a closed face one swing, more of an open face the next, and mm -hmm. definitely between clubs. Um, but learning to feel that club head and club face is probably what distinguishes elite players from just very good players and very good players from average players. And yep. so I think it's something worth talking about and, and working on and thinking about. So. Yeah. Well, and as we've talked about a few times, I tend to be better with my shorter clubs on getting the club face back to square and the longer the club is get to my driver, it's like when I watch myself on video, a lot of times that club face is wide open when I'm in delivery. And one of your theories is that that's what really causes me and anyone to flip is that you're trying to rapidly correct that to get it square. And that's the only way your body knows how to do it because at that the only point- way your body can do it. It's too that. late, yeah. Right. <laughs> or it's going right. Exactly, yeah. And we're smart, our brain subconsciously smart enough to figure you, that stuff yeah, out. Yeah, you split slice second. it or push it enough times to the right and you don't want to do that again. So, that's right. Yeah. And so, um, so stay with us and we'll, I'll show you a few things and a couple ideas that might work for you. And yeah. We'll talk about some body control and shoulder issues mm -hmm. and ideas as well. Um, we, Patrick had sent me a video last night. Who was it from? So, I don't Earn know. Dog, give him a shout out. We really like his channel. He, do, yeah. he works with the coach, kind of similar to what we're doing really. Uh -huh. And um, he has a lot of good instructions. We'll, we'll give him a link uh, yeah. so you can see that video if you're interested. Yeah, and so, you know, we watch other stuff too mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good stuff out there. Yeah. And if there is, we'll let you know, you know. Yeah. Um, what we like, and so I liked it a lot. The lesson he got from the guy yesterday is one I do a lot, especially with junior players. And so um, we'll discuss that as well. Do you want me to start there? Let's do it, yeah. Okay, so one of the things, you know, we've had a couple other videos where we talked about driver and hitting, how to correct a slice. Um, there's a lot of different ways to think about that and to do that. Um, a lot of it's setup issues and backswing issues, but a lot of it is also what is the orientation of my shoulders at impact? And, and how do my shoulders influence the path of the club? Because I think most of you know that if I'm a right-handed player and I have a club path that is too much to the left, I'm going to have a club face that is open or to the right of that path and we're going to hit fades or slices, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. And if I have a path that's too much to the right, 
my face is likely going to get close to that path at impact and I'm going to hit hooks or duck hooks or maybe draws if it's a slight mm -hmm. thing. And so the orientation of my shoulders um, at impact can have a great influence on that. And so hopefully this shows up pretty good on video. If I fold a, um, an alignment stick across my shoulders and I'm parallel to that target line with this stick, um, if my shoulders at impact are closed or pointed to the right, well, my path is going to go to the right. And then the opposite's true, that if at impact my shoulders are pointed to the left, well, the club has no choice but to follow that shoulder line and swing from outside in too much for a right-hander. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So that's how come, for one thing, to regress a little bit. One of the things, I had a lesson this morning with a left-hander that's a big, strong guy, six foot four, six foot five, 220 pounds, yeah. and can hit it a mile, has a lot of club head speed, 110 miles an hour probably, and but either hits big block fades to the left as a left-hander or snap hooks. And when, he used to play from a very closed position when I first met him, and we've got that corrected to where his club face is square and his backswing, but he still struggles left and right. Mm. And so I'm going to show you right-handed since that's how we're set up here. But what he was doing was he had a closed stance with his feet and an open stance with his shoulders when he would address the ball. And I'm exaggerating to be able to show you this. And one swing, he would swing down his feet line and it would go way right or hook, okay? Yep. And then one time with the shoulders the other direction, he would come over it and then he would hit big slices, okay? And so all I simply did was put alignment sticks on the ground. I put one of the eye line mirrors on the ground where he could see his shoulders as he looked down in the mm -hmm. mirror. And I just got him square with his feet, hips, and shoulders. And it immediately improved his dispersion mm. from right to left. And so it's very important to understand, you know, that relationship at impact with your shoulders. And what I see with a lot of people, Patrick, is they set up with driver and it's farther forward in their stance and their feet are pretty good. But when they put their bottom hand on the club, they reach like this. Now their shoulders get open yeah. and boy, you know, the, if they're a slicer, that's a <laughs> pretty dangerous spot to start from. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I would tell most of you is really pay attention to feet, hips, shoulders, try to get everything square to dress. Some of you older guys that might have a misaligned back or hips, um, um, I see that a lot too. Their hips are out of line so bad that when their feet are square, their shoulders are like this. If that's the case for you, um, the shoulders are more important than the feet because our arms are attached to them and that's what controls the path of the club is our arms and our shoulder swing. So if it's physically impossible for you to get your feet, hips, and shoulders square, at least get your shoulders square. That may mean you have to close your stance a lot if you're out of alignment, but do it. And so um, that's my recommendation. Now, that being said from an address position, I, especially with some juniors um, and college players, both men and women that I work with. I do this drill a lot when they're having trouble uh, as a right-hander hitting a ball flight from right to left, mm -hmm. okay? And they look like they've got a pretty good swing. It looks like it's on plane. It looks like the club face is pretty good, but they're still hitting blocks or they're still hitting fades. And what it generally is is that their shoulders at impact get rotated to where it's open when they strike the ball. 
And if my shoulders are pointed this way to the left at impact, my club's always going to be behind my center, and that's going to cause a left to right ball flight or a thin shot yep. um, or a block. Okay? And so what I do with them and what was on that video that you sent me last night that I thought was great um, and is that I try to get them to make a normal backswing and backswing turn, but at impact, I want them to feel like their sternum and their shoulders, I put Patrick's bag here on about a 30 degree angle mm -hmm. behind the ball, and I want them to feel like at impact that their chest is still back here. I don't want them to stop there and only swing their arms, but I want them to time it. I still want to turn back and a turn through, but I want them to time it to where their club hits the ball, their chest is pointing back this way, like where Patrick's standing to me right now. Um, if they actually did that, they may top it, or they'd hit a pretty big hook, mm -hmm. okay? But that's okay, because we're trying not to hit fades and slices. Right. I don't mind them hooking yep. it, okay? Mm -hmm. And if they do hook it with the clubs and Patrick this far behind me, well, then we'll just move it 10 degrees more this way, and they'll feel with their sternum there here at impact. Because you're really just trying to get the shoulders square at, is the ultimate Ideally, goal, right? I'd love the shoulders square at impact, mm -hmm. yes. And if you really look at most tour players, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that focus on what their hips are doing these days. Most of them at impact with their hips are very much rotated to the left at impact, but most of them have a big separation between their lower body and their upper body mm -hmm. flexibility wise. And they're open with their hips, but their shoulders are square to their target line. I would tell you this, I'm almost 65 years old here in another month. I cannot do that. I am not, I, I, 30 years ago I could do it, but I am not flexible enough in my hips and my core to be able to have my hips open at impact and to have my shoulders square. Mm. So what I say earlier, the shoulders are the most important. So you got to focus on those. So I focus on yeah. the shoulders. And for me nowadays, my impact position is pretty much my hips and shoulders are both squared impact. Mm -hmm. But that's my flexibility range. And does it produce some inconsistent results because of that at some time? Yes, it does. But physically, that's all I'm able to do. And all of us have to swing within our limitations. Absolutely. Right. And that's why there's so much information on YouTube and so many different ideas is because they're really addressing limitations in people's swings and giving preferences on, on how to change things. And, and one might work for you and it doesn't work for Patrick. Sure. And it doesn't work for me. Yep. And more power to you if you find that secret yeah and so the opposite's true if you want to hit a fade on purpose i could put a bag out in front so guys that tend to hook it all the time i can put a bag out here at 30 or 40 degrees out in front of me and like i'm going to try chest. to feel it impact my chest is pointing in that direction when i hit the ball that leaves the club behind me and it hits a fade. We, we had a really good video last week that talked about draws and mm -hmm. fades and slices and hooks. And yep. this would be another thought process to achieve the same thing. Yeah. Okay. You understand? Absolutely. And so, but I, I do think it's body control and it's pretty hard. You've got to really feel like, boom, that's where I'm going to hit it when I'm like this. Boom, that's when I'm going to hit it like this. I want to hit a fade. Boom, I'm going to hit it when I'm like that. Does it take a lot of practice? And do you have to have really good awareness of what your shoulders and your body's doing? Yes. So that's why typically I'm doing this drill with low handicap players that mm -hmm. are already pretty good. Uh, but it could help anybody. And sure. that's a good thing to think about. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that Patrick had 
blows his mind, I have a feeling. What you call it? Black magic? Oh, <laughs> well, it's like, voodoo? yeah, this is like a black magic uh, in my brain trying to understand how this thing works. So, as my chest is back like this, as I, as I hit the ball, what it really feels like in my swing is that my arms are going to work this way then to get to the ball and impact. Because mm -hmm. if I stay back here, the only way I could get to impact is like this. Patrick says, well, isn't that a flip? <laughs> no, it's not, because I'm maintaining this angle here in this hand, and so it's actually going this way to hit it. But it's impossible to really stay this far turned on the way back to feel that impact, okay? But as, as I come down and I turn forward, then it doesn't look like that. And we worked on a similar motion mm -hmm. last week, I yeah. think, two weeks ago. I was in Vegas last week. And, um, you know, Patrick's angle of attack, you could go back oh, and it, show him that. it instantly got much better. It did. Yeah. He was like at zero, and went it went to, to minus, minus two, yeah, minus three. I, maybe, yeah, right. even four, yeah. Minus four even yeah. did it. It might have, yeah. And so he feels like he's flipping doing this, and he's actually not. So yep. what's real and what? you feel not the same it's yeah. not always <laughs> the same anyway yeah. yeah all right any other questions on that well no let me so let me hit a couple and you watch okay. right i want you to check a couple things for me so all right like we talked about we're first going to look at our shoulder alignment and yeah. leg alignment and make sure that we're all square yep so go ahead and just so set i'm just going to set up just like i normally yep. would let me and we're aiming there's a group of pine trees out there on the range we're still dormant here so it's yep. kind of hard to see the flags so I aimed at those pine trees so you could kind of see that on camera. And then, so as he sets up, you'll see he's pretty doggone good. Mm -hmm. So his okay. feet are pretty good there. And he could be just a little better there. So that left arm should touch this shaft. Oh, so I'm, I'm a little open here. You are, you're oh, okay. open. Oh, that's so, interesting. I felt, I feel like I'm dead square. Yeah, so that's, you're not, okay. you're just slightly open. Okay. Good, and you can tilt towards me just a little bit. Oh, oh this yeah, way, that okay. Way. Yeah, we could be that way just a little more. Really, so. okay. Yeah. And this is even for, so for like a seven So you're just a little iron. close there. But, okay. But that's pretty good. Okay. Let me look from behind. This feels different to me. This feels, um, I feel more closed than usual. Yep. Nope, that's pretty good. Pretty good? Okay, so this is my normal feel. Yep. So, so I need to be more that's here. That's the mistake I talked about. Yeah. Um, especially, and it gets worse with driver making that mistake. Well, I'll, we'll pull that out in a second and All look right. at that because that, that's where I could really be in yeah. trouble. All right, so I'll just hit one like with this. I just hit one like that. Yeah. So. He's been playing like crazy, so he's pretty sore. That's his <laughs> first shot in about two hours. Swing it, yeah, I've been swinging a lot lately. And I've been trying to still feel, feel yeah, this. Yeah, you didn't do that at all. In that no, last that swing. one didn't, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. But you see how much better that flies. Oh, yeah. Much better. I know. And so I don't think you have to feel that at all when you're feel, doing feel. this drill because it's the only way you can hit the ball. Mm -hmm. If your chest is actually pointing here at impact, the only way you can hit the ball is to do that with your hands. Yeah, okay. And so I don't think you have to think about both. So once you're set up here, I would like your sternum, we got our microphones on, mm -hmm. I want your microphone to point at my microphone. When I'm at impact. At impact. Okay, so I'm just going to so, super slow-mo. No, don't slow motion it. Let's swing okay. at it. All right. All right, no so slow I'm, motion. You're going to swing at it, and you're going to point at my microphone. Okay. Good, I didn't even see that one. Oh, that was pretty straight. Well, okay, it's good. It's a very small fade. Good, let's do it again. I well, felt like my, did my. I couldn't tell. Okay, I felt I, like I was here. All right, well, keep feeling that. Okay. All right. Ball just a little more forward. Okay. All right, good. Not that much. All right, In between. Perfect. Okay. So again, your microphone at mine yep. at impact. That's simple. I can't see him from this angle, so is that pretty good? I, I was I was still pointing my chest. It felt good. No, it <laughs> it did sounded too. good. It sounded so. good. So I yeah. Agree. 
I, I, so that was, I think you are pointing at me. So I, it it seemed it. like it, I right, was. So, so uh, keep doing we'll, it. We'll have to check the footage later. And, and you see. guys can't afford for me to stand here <laughs> while you hit a couple thousand balls doing this. So you can use just the bag, put an alignment yeah. stick in go. the ground or a golf bag or <laughs> your range bucket and that'll work. Yep, okay? yep. And it'll be cheaper than paying for me. Yep. Okay? All right. So I'm still, I, this is a good thing for me to practice is just feel like I'm more closed at setup. Yeah, just wait for me a second, okay? okay. I'm gonna grab something out of the cart. Yep. So everybody thinks that a putting mirror is only good to practice putting, mm -hmm. but if you really wanna see what your shoulder alignment is. Oh yeah, stick I, it right I, there. Yeah, maybe you're gonna pretend you have a club in your hand. Can you see your shoulders? Yeah. Can you, or is it better in uh, here? Yeah, that's a little better, yeah. Okay. But you see my lines? Mm -hmm. I have them parallel to my target line. So now can you see that your forearms and your shoulders match up? They look pretty good to me right well, here. Well, good. Yep. That's, that doesn't lie, the mirror. No, that's good, yeah. You like that? <laughs> yeah, I do. All right. So use a mirror, put it on the ground between your feet. If you think you have a shoulder alignment issue, whether it's putting, chipping, or these, full swings. Yeah, these things, we'll put a link to these on Amazon for you guys. It, we, we use this for putting too, and I it's do. amazing. Just, I, I especially like it for my eye line to make sure that I'm over the ball sure. because a lot of times I've noticed with my putting, I'll be too in or too out. And it, from practicing with a mirror like this, I'm really getting more consistent on feeling like my eyes are directly over it when I'm out Good. on the course. And if you'd ever go to a PGA Tour event and go to the putting green, especially Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll see a lot just of Just about out there. everybody out there yeah. has I can got see a why. putting mirror. Yep. So, and most of them are for I, from Eyeline Golf. So they've been good to me. So. Yeah. Okay, so this is, I feel pretty square here. Good. Well, you, you, I, they you look, know, the mirror like it. doesn't lie. Yeah. It's, 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 if you're square in that mirror, you're perfect. Cool. Now, your microphone points at my microphone at impact. Okay. A little chunky. That was pretty chunky. Yeah. We're doing it again, and that might happen. And I, I you're feel farther like, to the right when you do that than normal. I feel so like on a, that one too, I, I I didn't get this movement, so okay. which would potentially cause that. You think? Yes, I do. Could just keep swinging. You're doing great. Yep. I'm gonna scoot this way just a little bit. Okay. So do you see where I'm at now? Yep. That's where I want you to be at impact. Okay. And when you do this, you have to keep turning. You're not freezing in this position. Keep, keep You're it. You're just in this position in motion as you're following yep. through. That was pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Yeah, I agree. Good. Keep doing that. I'm looking forward to seeing this video uh, yeah, this and watching be from behind. Yeah. A little farther forward. So I don't think you're a little back in your stance. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of cheating back today, isn't it? It is. Okay, so Same I'm as looking, me. So you're yep. gonna feel like you're pointing right, right here right at here. my thing. Do you yep. see that angle? Yep. Good. That was really good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And does that feel different with what you have to do with your arms? It does. Okay. I I definitely feel like my chest is le a little bit less open when I'm hitting the ball. Right. It feels just not not terribly different, but it does feel like I'm a little bit more to the right than right. usual. I'm going to leave your bag here, see okay. where your head cover is yep, here. So that's, that's, where that's, I'm... that's where I want you to point, and I want to be able to look from behind yeah, here. Yeah, okay. So. Let's see. Point at your head cover on the way through. Yep. Try it again, that one. That now, felt a little more open to me. It could have been. I still think it's bad ball position. I think you got it too far back. Okay. But this should make you swing a lot more from the right. Can you tell that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And maybe too much on that last swing. So that's okay. Just try it again. Almost. A little thin. Yep. So what I'm noticing is it's, it's a little tricky to feel like I point here at impact, but then remember to keep turning I know through. It is. That's the, the, where I'm finding. But you need to. Mm -hmm. This isn't an overnight quick fix. No, it's just a it's good not. drill. So, but it, it's very productive for many, many people. Mm -hmm. so. That was better, huh? Yeah. Now those are good shots. 
Oh yeah, these are all fine. Like that. Yeah, well, you... I know, but they shouldn't be. You should be hooking it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's true. That's I true. Know. So if so, I'm, if I'm, yeah, I need so, to be. So you're still not enough back here, and you're still not enough mm -hmm. with the arms. So that's good. I that... would love to see one go over the yellow okay. flag from this. Oh, I could probably make that happen. Well, let's make it happen. All right. All right. That's better, even though that was thin, that was better. Yeah. So that, that's what I want to see. Okay, I can, yeah, I can do that. That one would have really hooked if, mm -hmm. if you did hit it solid, so. Same thing, feel like yep. your chest points at the bag. And hit a hook for me, that's what I want to see, go. okay? Okay. Because that's what you should be doing from that exaggerated impact with your shoulders right so it should go straight if they're square here mm -hmm. so if i'm this way and you get in the club but it really guys that tend to really block it right and fade it mm -hmm. they may only hit it straight like this yeah, sure first, okay yeah. and so um so if that's you if you've always hit it high right and this helps you hit it straight great keep doing it yeah it might take you six months but eventually oh. you'll start hitting draws it reminds me a little of that you've talked about the driver drill your buddy that's had right had, had to literally like stand backwards and try it's it. really was, the same drill right just a less extreme version of exactly. it exactly yeah. and yeah. you're putting them in a position where it's impossible to turn any more than square absolutely yeah right. that's cool. correct All right, i'm gonna try to really hook one and you do that by your chest pointing at me mm -hmm. at impact and your arms doing it, okay? And it's not your hands doing it, it's your arms mm -hmm. rotating. There we go, there, it's your arms this, doing This it. is the feel we're, it is. we're going for right here. Okay. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, hard, it's tough for me to get... Uh, the, the more extreme I do it, the more, I guess, I'm coming in flatter, so I'm more likely to hit it a little right. fat doing it, right? Yes, sir. So don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. And when you're doing new things, folks, it's okay to screw up. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it. The other thing I tell lots of people um, is I don't want people evaluating every shot. If you evaluate every shot you hit, you will go crazy, okay? <laughs> yeah. Literally crazy. And I've seen many people go crazy in this game, okay? And so what I would tell any student, we've got 30 balls here probably with what you've hit and what we've got mm -hmm. left. Evaluate all 30 of them. Wait until you're done and say, okay, how many did I hit better than I've ever hit in my life? Okay, how many did I hit really good? Mm -hmm. How many did I hit okay? And how many did I screw up and hit bad? And if most of them are pretty good or better, well, that's a pretty productive practice. Absolutely, yeah. You understand? Yep. And so, but I find too many people are too hard on themselves they try to correct every shot. They hit, they hit one shot and it fades 10 yards. So they try not to hit a fade on the next one. Yep. And then it hooks. And then they try not to hit a hook. And then they <laughs> top it. And they try not to top it. Yep. And if you go from swing to swing to swing, constantly trying to correct for the shot you just hit, you will go absolutely <laughs> crazy. You will not enjoy this game. Yep. You will not get any better because you have to do the same fundamental things over and over enough to be good at playing this game. Absolutely. And if you're constantly correcting, um, you, you just can't do it. Yep. And so, so keep that in mind. So it's okay, you hit one, you hit eight inches behind the shot before. Mm -hmm. It's okay, he's yep. doing something different. He's gonna goof up, it's gonna feel weird. And, and don't let it, don't give up on a drill or don't give up on a thought process mm -hmm. just because you've hit four or five bad shots in a row. I think that's one of the most challenging things about getting better at golf is if you just keep doing what you've always doing, you're not going to get any better. But there is 
a sort of a if you look at a curve there's you will be a little worse maybe temporarily while you're working on something but hopefully it will make you better and you just got to trust that you're yeah and i don't think you get worse by getting instruction at first mm -hmm. you may not hit great shots all the time sure yeah but you're not that doesn't mean you're getting worse right right and then what else i would tell you is that see what i look for with any student that i'm working on on any subject if they hit two or three bad ones but they hit one that they say wow i never hit one like that before mm -hmm. well then i know i'm on the right track and then I tell them I know I'm on the right track yep. because of that. Does that make sense? Well, that's a big part of it, too, is I think getting that feedback that you feel like, even if some of them aren't doing what you want, that you're on the right track to doing the right thing. Right. And I do think as long as I've been doing that as an instructor, I'm pretty good yeah, at that. Yeah, I agree. And so um, I think that's why people come back to see me, is I, I, I help them with those kind of thoughts and stuff and encouragement um, if you're not getting that same encouragement from where you're going you need to find somebody else that'll I agree. help you with that would you agree with I, that? so this is just a fun story i was going through my phone i've got thousands of golf swings saved <laughs> to look back upon and there was a period probably four or five years ago whenever i started getting back into golf where i did one lesson with ed and i had done some with a, a different instructor and i i watched some of the swings that i that person had made me change and I was just like, it's not at all the type of swing that I want to be making. I, what I've appreciated about you is you help me work with what I've already got and make little tweaks to get it better instead of trying to completely rebuild it from the ground up. Right. So. It should never be necessary to do that yeah. for one thing. Um, and I have people ask me that all the time. I'm here, start me from scratch, <laughs> I'm ready, just tear everything apart and let's maybe start over. And uh, for one thing, everybody, just like a fingerprint, everybody's different yep. and has their own. Yep. And everybody's got their own way to swing a golf club. And, I mean, you could argue Tiger Woods, um, whether it was Butch Harmon, Hank Haney, Chris Como, Sean Foley, whoever he's seen. I mean, you still knew it was Tiger Woods swinging the golf club. Yeah, absolutely. They could tell you change something and change this and change that. But I promise you from 50 yards away, whoever he was working with, it did not matter. You knew that was Tiger Woods swinging. Yep. And if I'm old enough to have seen Tiger Woods on That's Incredible, I think, when he was three years old, yeah. hitting balls in a net on national TV, and I would argue that if you watched him at three, he doesn't swing anything different at 40 than he did when he was three years old. Yeah. It's still the same golf swing. <laughs> and is it a slightly different? And may there be slightly different angles in a wrist or a club face? Mm -hmm. Well, sure. But boy, the motion and the, the way he walks and the, all of that is ingrained. Yep. And I mean, it's just what you're born with. Yep. And so everybody has to learn to do their swing. Everybody's got a very unique swing and it's theirs. Yeah. And if all you gotta do is watch a champion's tour and you can figure that out really quick. Oh, absolutely. And um, and especially if you go back in the old films and you see Trevino and Ray Floyd and Nicholas and Palmer and, and gosh, Hubert Green and man, I mean, everybody was different back in the 60s that and the 70s. And a couple I'm not sure we're any better. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I went to a senior tour uh, event and I was able to, one of the tee boxes, I stood there with my phone and I videoed three in a row. And it was amazing how different each of them were, but each of them did their impact. Each looked good. You know, yep. it's like they got, they got their way different ways, but yep. yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And that is one thing. Every great player that's ever lived at impact is in pretty much the same position. Right. Yep. But boy, there are different ways of getting there. <laughs> Drastically. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, and has that changed a little bit? Yeah, it's changed a little bit. But, you know, I've got all those tour model swings on my track, man, and it's pretty amazing, I mean, to look at the different swings even on that with the modern players. Yeah. I mean, and, um, you know, some of them are awesome looking and some of them are, you know, pretty weird looking. I mean, <laughs> the, the track man, we'll have to show that sometime maybe, the, the track man... Um, Brooks Kepka 
video on there is shocking to me to watch that swing in slow motion. Yeah. And I'm not sure he still swings that. It looks like a very old, he was probably on the European tour when mm -hmm. that was was put on there. But um, I mean to tell you, it's shocking how bad it is, really. <laughs> and, you know, one of the greatest players in the world. Yeah. So I don't mean that derogatory at no, all. But yeah. I mean, but if I put him on comparison side by side with Justin Rose and you say, which one's won more major championships? Um, you would never pick Brooks yeah. Kepka if you didn't know the two apart, is sure. what I'd tell you, yeah. based on just what that looked like on video. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, it's pretty amazing to see the differences. Yeah, yep. absolutely. All right, any questions on that? No, I think that's and it. And so that's a really great drill. And uh, even at home in the backyard, I mean, I kind of like, you know, I can feel, mm -hmm. boom, I'm going to hit it now. My shoulders are to the right of my target. I want to hit a fade. Boom, my shoulders are going to be the left of my target. And man, when the barbecue grill's getting hot and you yeah. got a cold beverage, you can just stand out there with a target line and, and start to be aware of what your chest and your shoulders are at impact. And at first, it's not easy at all, but the more you're aware of it, the longer you're aware of it, you you will you will learn to control your body. The, you can think about anything. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Good job. That was awesome. Thank you. All right.